Welcome back. Today we're going to talk about equilibrium. Equilibrium literally means when something is completely at rest and not moving. So that's the definition of equilibrium. The area of physics and engineering that studies equilibrium is called statics. Statics because static means that something is not moving. So this is actually a very big area of study and it becomes very complicated with time. But today we're just going to look at the basics of statics. So statics is actually very important for many types of fields. It's important for architecture because buildings and bridges, for example, should be static. They should not move at all. Um, it's important for engineers because some machines have to be static as well. And it's important for doctors and for athletes because some parts of the body have to be static um, or you have to study the movement of the body and the joints and everything. So today we're going to start and we're going to discuss the two conditions that an object needs in order to be at rest, to be static or to be in equilibrium. So these are called the conditions for equilibrium. So there are two conditions for equilibrium because there are two types of equilibrium. So for something to be in total equilibrium, it has to have both translational and rotational equilibrium. That means that it's not moving up and down, right or left, forward and backward. That's translational equilibrium and it's also not, not rotating. So here's when what we saw in the previous video about torque is going to come into play. So in order to have translational equilibrium, we need all of the forces that are acting on an object to be equal to zero, to add up to zero. So that means we can write that as the sum, this is the symbol for sum, of forces as a vector is equal to zero. That means that the sum of all the forces that act horizontally is equal to zero, and the sum of all the forces that act vertically, Fy, is equal to zero. So usually, or in real life, there are never no forces acting on an object. We've seen that gravity is always acting on an object, and if it's not moving horizontally or vertically, there must also be either normal force or friction or something else that's keeping it from moving. So it's not that there are no forces at all. It's just that when you add up all of the forces, including uh, the signs for right and left and up and down, they cancel each other out and you end up with a total force of zero. And the second condition is the condition for rotational equilibrium. That means that an object is not rotating. And that only happens if the sum of all the torques acting off and on an object is equal to zero. So we write that as the sum of all torques, and we write torque as this uh, T that is a little cursive and uppercase is equal to zero. So what does that mean? There can be torques acting on the object, but all the torques that try to rotate an object clockwise have to equal all the torques that try to move the object counterclockwise so that they cancel out. So we can write this as this rule. Torques clockwise equal, and this is all of the torques, right? So the sum of all the clockwise torques has to be equal to the sum of all the counterclockwise torques. So for an object to be considered in equilibrium, both of these conditions have to be met at the same time. If not, it's either not in translational equilibrium or not in rotational equilibrium. So let's do an example. So here in this example, I drew a seesaw. A seesaw is un suyuaja. And there are two kids. One weighs 30 kilograms and the other one has a mass of 25 kilograms. And they're sitting on two edges of the seesaw. We want to find at what distance this little guy would have to sit so that the seesaw is in both translational equilibrium and rotational equilibrium. So the sum of forces is zero and the sum of torques is zero. So we start with the sum of forces. So we have to figure out first all of the forces acting on this seesaw. So we're going to draw our free body diagrams like we used to do when we were studying forces. So we have the bar and then we have, first we have um, a weight here represented by the kid of 30 times 9.8. So remember, we have to remember, never forget that the force of gravity or the weight 
is equal to mass times gravity, and gravity is 9.8. So the force is mass times 9.8, in this case 30 times 9.8. The force of the other kid is 25 times 9.8. Um, and we also have a weight here, the weight of the bar, which we can just say W bar, and we have a normal force here. Why? Because the, the seesaw is on the support. So the support has to be making a normal force upwards, right there where it touches. So what we know is that the sum of forces has to be zero. The sum of forces in X is zero because there's no horizontal forces. Here you can see all the forces are either up and down or down. And what we need is that all of the forces going up have to be equal to all of the forces going down so that there is no net or resultant force and the bar doesn't move up and down. So basically the up force, which is only normal force, has to be equal to 30 times 9.8 plus the weight of the bar plus 25 times 9.8. Didn't fit, but... But that's all we can do with forces. Um, that is going to happen naturally because if you remember when we saw forces, the normal force changes depending on what it needs to be. Um, as long as the support is strong enough, the normal force can be what it needs to be so that the bar doesn't move up or down. It's never going to be more, it's never going to fly up because of normal force. And if the support is strong enough, it's also not going to crash into the support and go down. So that's what we could do with condition one. But with condition two, we can solve this problem and figure out at what distance the boy has to be so that the bar is in rotational equilibrium. So here we have to remember that this force is at a distance of 2.5 and this force is at a distance that we're trying to find. So this is our unknown. And we need to remember the equation for a torque. So the equation for a torque was distance r times the force f. Right? So what we need to do is use this equation. All of the torques that try to turn the bar clockwise have to be equal to all the torques that try to turn the force counterclockwise. So let's start with clockwise. So notice that these two forces are acting right in the center of rotation. The center of rotation of the bar is in the middle where the support takes place. So those two forces won't do any torque since we learned last class that if the radius is zero, the torque is zero times whatever the force is, so it's zero. So these two forces won't generate any torque. We don't have to worry about them. So we only take into account this force to the left and this force to the right. This one is going to turn it counterclockwise and this one is going to try to turn it clockwise. So clockwise is this one. So we can write as an equation the force, which is 25 times 9.8 times the distance, which is x. That's what we're trying to find. And that's the only force that is trying to turn this clockwise. And counterclockwise, there's only this force. So the force, again, is 30 times 9.8. And the distance, r, is 2.5. And that's it. Since there are no more torques, that's the equation that we need to solve. So we get 30 times 9.8 times 2.5 over this part over here, 25 times 9.8. And you can notice that 9.8 is both at the top and at the bottom. That'll always happen because weights are always the mass times 9.8. So we can cancel 9.8. And this math is not that hard. 30 times 2.5 over 25. 2.5 and 25 are similar numbers, but 25 is 10 times bigger. So the only thing we need to divide to do is divide 30 over 10. So this is the same as 30 over 10, which is 3. So basically, if you do it by in your head or in the calculator, you're going to get a distance of 3 meters. That would be the solution to the problem when we're told at what distance the kid has to be for the bar to be in both translational and rotational equilibrium. Now let's move on to stability. When talking about stability, we have to talk about the three types of equilibrium that an object can be at. So an object can be in stable, unstable, or neutral equilibrium. When an object is at stable equilibrium, what that means is that if it's displaced slightly from its position, it will come back to its original position. So let's write that down. And 
when an object is in stable equilibrium, we call it balanced. We say that the object is balanced. So for example, if I have a table, and on top of the table I have a book lying flat on its long side, the center of mass of the book is at its center. Now what if I displace it slightly so that it's on this corner now? Right? What's going to happen is that I lifted it slightly, but as soon as I let go, it'll come back to its original position and it, it'll, it'll end up again as it was at the beginning. So that means that this object was balanced. It was at a stable equilibrium. But unstable equilibrium is when an object is, when it's displaced slightly, it continues displacing even further. So let's write that down. So an example of this could be the same book, but if instead of lying flat on its side, it was lying on the short side. So let's say you have the book, and it's standing up on its short side. So it's just standing there, but if you displace it slightly, so let's say you move it a little bit to the right, what's probably going to happen is that if you let go, it'll continue falling and end up lying flat on its back after it falls. So while in stable equilibrium, displacing it made it come back to its original position, and unstable equilibrium, displacing it a little, made it continue falling to another uh, position. And neutral equilibrium means that when you displace it slightly, it stays in that new position when you let go. So when the object is displaced, it stays in its new position, and this is generally the case of objects that roll. So for example, you have a table, and you have a ball here on the left of the table, and you move it a little bit. You move it, you displace it, you roll it so that now it's at the center of the table. If you let go, it'll now stay at the center of the table. It won't continue moving to the right, and it won't go back to the left. It's a neutral equilibrium because it'll stay where you left it. So how can we know if an object is going to be in stable or unstable or, or neutral equilibrium? So the way to figure that out is by drawing an arrow through the center of uh, mass that goes down to the ground in the direction of gravity. So why do objects keep moving um, or come back to their original you know, position? Because of gravity. So if the arrow that you draw passes through the base, it's in stable equilibrium. If it doesn't pass through the base, it's in unstable equilibrium and it's going to fall. So let's do that with this example over here. So this is an arrow that shows the direction of the force. It goes downwards. When I displace this book, the arrow still passes through the base. You see it's still passing through the base. So that means that it'll come back to that base when I let go. Instead here, the arrow goes down but when I, when I push it, it goes down and it's no longer passing through the base because the base used to be this one and the arrow is outside the base, right? So what happens is that it's now going to fall to this new base over here. So that's why it's an unstable equilibrium. And in this case, well, it's always passing through the base because it's rolling and it'll just stay there. So just when you have an object, draw that arrow and see if it's un in stable or unstable equilibrium. If, for example, you have a pencil and you tip it like this, this is even more unstable because look that the arrow is completely out of this base, which was the tip. So the smaller the base, usually the more unstable the equilibrium and the bigger the base, the more stable the equilibrium. And if it's rolling, it's usually neutral equilibrium.